Hi and welcome back to a new video. You might remember this card. It's a 5700 XT, which we got out of the second flood PC, which we were like trying to save. For some reason, I mean, I thought that I already cleaned this card and uh, yeah, when I just picked it up out of the box, I figured out that I still didn't clean it. But the issue with this card was that when we took it apart completely, we figured out that some of those fans, I mean, if there's like water and mud inside, inside the bearing, then you would have to take it apart, make sure that you're cleaning everything, which didn't work out. We broke the fans because they're not meant to be taken apart. And then I read some of your comments, so thank you very much for leaving all the comments down below, that we shouldn't just rely on replacing original fans, we can just do a fan mod. Which basically means that we're using the original heatsink and just zip tie some fans to it. That's something you can do, but that's probably not the most elegant solution. Seasonic, the heart of your system. These are the remaining parts of our 5700 XT. You can see it, I cleaned it as far as possible. Between those like tiny fins of the cooler, there was still a lot of mud and dirt, but yeah, just cleaning was okay. There is a bit of corrosion on some parts of the heatsink itself, but that should not be an issue when it comes to just the cooling performance itself. And this was the original fan shroud, where we had our like 92 millimeter fans sitting inside, the fans which we couldn't rescue anymore. So the issue was that the bearings and everything inside those uh, tiny fans, they had a lot of mud and dirt as well inside and it was just not possible to open them up, to clean them, to like re-grease them and everything. So a lot of you guys said in the comments that we should just do like a Noctua fan mod, which would obviously work. So we could just place our Noctua fans on there, about three of these, those are NFA9X14 Pro Max Black Swap. Anyway. So you could just put them on there, zip tie them, I guess. It would still work. Probably one fan here, one fan there, but it wouldn't look as nice. So we th just thought we would create our own fan shroud, something like this, with three of those fans inside. Yeah, so I ordered some pieces of aluminum and it's a bit too thick. This is like 40 millimeters in size. And uh, I originally planned it for like normal sized fans just judging by the thickness. So we would have needed like 25 millimeter in height, but now the Noctua fans are quite a bit uh, smaller, which means they would, we would have to cut away 50% of the aluminum block, which is maybe a bit overkill. So I will look for a thinner piece. So that will be our fan shroud. It's basically the same as the original part. We added a logo engravement right here. We will have the three fans sitting inside. And this is also like the original part. So nothing really special, just that we will fully mill this out of a solid part of aluminium. So just in that very specific moment, the camera was obviously not running. You can see we had a fail right here because the, the part is mounted on this vacuum table. And obviously if you're just milling away a ton of aluminum in between, especially right here, we have those cutouts. 
the vacuum was not strong enough anymore to keep the aluminium part on the table and we had this tiny accident right here but now everything should be fine we just added some tape some sticky tape which should fix it Just missing the like even surface, you can see it's a lot of different uh, surface finishes. But luckily, since we have our sandblasting uh, machine, we can just give it a nice touch and should have the same surface finish everywhere. Such a lovely surface finish. It's just the same everywhere. It looks absolutely awesome. Obviously, you could go further and like do black anodizing or anything similar, but I think it still looks quite nice. There's one last thing I want to do, like one last finishing touch. Well, that fails. It could have been nice, but... Ah, damn it. At least now it's working. Our original plan was to use like a 90 degree face mill. I'm not, not sure how the exact wording for this is in English, but uh, like a chamfer mill, maybe. But it didn't work out in the CAM tool. Not sure why. That's why we changed to a one millimeter end mill, just to get some structure inside. Let's see if that works out. At least the tool didn't break yet. The final step is adding a chamfer on the round part. If that goes well, it should be okay. If not... Mm. So right now I'm just cleaning the cart. It's the same process as what we did with all the other flood PCs. So first of all, just rough cleaning just with tap water and then after like most of the mud is gone from the cart we will clean it off with uh, isopropyl alcohol just to make sure that we avoid any kind of water underneath like memory chips and GPU but that's something we showed already like two or three times in the flood PC videos so I'm not going to show the entire process we'll be back once I'm done with this now check out our new fan shroud. I'm very proud of this, it looks absolutely amazing. The mix of this like matte surface from the sandblasting of the aluminium and the shiny like contrast in between with the one millimeter uh, end mill and like the chamfer which is also shiny on the fans. Also our RX 5700 XT engraving on the side. I think it looks absolutely brilliant. The only thing which I'm missing right now or the thing that is still left to do is doing the wiring for our fans. The original heatsink will just go on top. We have our mounting holes like right on those spots. So it will sit somewhere on here. So the only thing I have to do is connect the three fans and then connect it to the original connector to make sure we can somehow connect it back to the card. It's the last thing to do. I finished the wiring, just connected all three of those fans, soldered them together 
right up front here. If I would do this again, if I would repeat this pro project, I would just add some additional cutouts on top to keep the original like wires and just use like some Y cables or whatever, like some splitters that would make it a lot easier and save like one hour or like 30 minutes for the soldering. Now the last thing to do is add the thermal pads back on, on the power stages and on the memory modules right here. Add the thermal pads to the GPU and then we're good to go. Now the last thing was adding the thermal pads and since we're using the original cooler we also have to follow pretty much original spec for the thermal pad thickness using 1.5 mm thick thermal pads on the memory modules and 2 mm thick pads on the VRMs of the card. This is amazing. Just look at the result, it's so simple or a graphics card can be so simple to look nice. You just need a bit of metal, some aluminium and some nice looking fans. You don't need any plastic, no RGB, nothing, and it will still look amazing, I think. It's idle, so the fans are not spinning. The fanless mode is still working. Absolutely amazing. So just have to do some temperature testing. Well, we have to do some temperature testing to make sure everything is fine, but so far, absolutely love it. After a few loops in 3D mic times by Extreme, you can probably also hear it. The card is, one, is running at 100% fan speed and also 100% load. It's not the quietest card in this condition, but I think it should be on par with uh, the stock situation of the card. But at least in this case, we can use the card again. Prior to our mod, the card was broken because we couldn't use the original fans anymore after the flood. In this case, we can still use it. The temperatures are not the best, simply because we also didn't change the heatsink itself, right? We just swapped the fans, essentially. Looking at the temperature, the GPU is sitting somewhere at like 80 degrees Celsius. The hotspot is just above 100 degrees Celsius, which is pretty much what is expected from the 5700 XT. Memory modules are sitting below 70 degrees Celsius, which is okay. And the clock is also around 1700 megahertz, which is also as expected. About like two, three weeks later for me, I just disassembled the card because we actually shot this video a while ago. Also long time before we got the 3070 Noctua edition. But I just disassembled the card because I was trying to do some like good arrangement for doing the thumbnail of the video. And then I noticed the thermal paste contact was not that great. Which also explains why we didn't see such great temperatures. Yeah, at least we have an explanation for that. Okay, so I mount it again, test it again and I can already, because I cannot really hear it, there is a huge difference. What I did was just adding some additional washers underneath the screws and just added more mounting pressure to compress the thermal pads a bit more. And that definitely helped. Huge difference in temperature, about 20 degree in the hotspot itself. So that alone is already huge. I mean, the performance is still the same. Clocks are roughly the same, but fan speed is a lot lower. Now I'm satisfied with the result. Before I was a bit yeah, disappointed, but now this is, this is really awesome. I am very, very satisfied with the end result. I think the only thing I might change for like a future project is that after like the sandblasting process and prior to any kind of additional engravings and stuff, I would probably do like black anodize, um, like black coating of the aluminum and then do like those finishing touches with the shiny aluminum engraving processes after the black anodizing of the aluminum. I think that would look very, very nice, but just like that, very pleased with the result, looks great. Obviously, as I said before, the performance and result, it's still the same cooler. So it's still an XFX double dissipation in the end, which is not the greatest card on the planet when it comes to the cooling performance, but it will work as you could see in uh, our result. Like right now, the backplate is also missing, so we don't have any kind of backplate for the card, but it will work. From the back, it's not the best result, but from the front, I think it looks absolutely beautiful. For the next project, we might do like a complete thing where we completely uh, close off the card with like a functional backplate or whatever, if you are even interested in seeing something like this for the future. Yeah, but it was a fun project. I learned a lot, again, about the CNC machining as well. I know that there are still some things I have to look at especially with our tiny fail on top, which in the end didn't matter much, but there is still some stuff I still have to learn. All right, thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.